Ratchet Free or Ratchet Ouya. This game has so many cool movements and tricks that it's still my favorite speedrun game. I speedrun it a lot. With my experience, I will not only teach you the tricks and movements, but also tell you the basic stupid mistakes I made when I just started. First, make sure that the third person mode is selected in the camera options, not first person, not strafe. Furthermore, it's preferable if you don't play in the PAL PS2 version because the game will run at 50 FPS instead of 60 and charge boots will be slower. And because of that, it will be much more difficult or even impossible to reach a long distance. All the movements and tricks will make you faster, more efficient and will allow you to skip a lot of distance and hide. A lot of them also work for Ratchet 2 going commando. The game is really hard. For some tricks you will need hours or even days of intensive practice, so don't be disappointed if you can't do something on the first day. The common beginner mistake is to try to go very fast by directly learning hard and fast strats. It's better to master some easy tricks very well than to know everything at the middle level. And don't worry, you can already make a good time if you go slowly but do everything consistently. All the time codes for every movement and trick are in the description. Prepare your tea and let's get started. We begin with many jumps and some basic tricks. Most of them don't work on Obane Gemini for some gravity reasons, but there are still some. The lag jump. This one is powerful in any percent. It allows you to avoid many obstacles with the side flips. Start with a long jump with X R1. Make sure that you press X earlier than R1. Just before Ratchet touches the ground, do the side flip with X R1 and move the stick to the side at the same time. You can chain more lag jumps after the first one of course, with the same way. It's also possible to achieve the same speed from the walk. You kinda mix the long jump and the side flip in only one movement. Start the long jump inputs and immediately push the stick from forward to the side. You need to delay your stick a little bit before moving it. You should see Ratchet as if he starts to long jump, but he does a side flip. The timing of the stick for a good lag jump is precise, so try it many times with pushing the stick in different timings. The trick is impossible in Holo Star after the Talos fight because you don't have clank. Although this movement looks cool, the most optimal way is still the basic long jumps with the thruster pack. The lava jump. Say no to the lava, because this trick enables you to bypass it. It shouldn't really be a lava, but it's a surface that makes you jump with damage. There is a small timing window in which you can jump off. Glide down spamming X, so when you touch the lava, you jump. You can even long jump from it. This time you need to know the timing very well. Hold X and press the inputs right before getting burned. The charge. The charge is essential for 90% of all movements. I'm not even sure I would speedrun this game if there weren't. You probably already noticed that if you double tap R1 and hold it, the speed will ridiculously reduce. The fastest way is to simply spam R1 so you go at the same speed. In Open in Gemini it's useless to do this because there is no difference. Just double tap and hold it. Be careful with the charge in the air. You must hold your analog stick forward or it will stop. You can also just double tap R1, so you follow the speed at the end of the charge. If you are on a magnetic wall, you need the Infernox armor or the skin to be able to use the charge like in Nobani Draco. For some reason with other armor, it auto-equips the magnetic boots so you can't do anything. The Strafe At first glance, it doesn't even seem like a movement, but it's used everywhere for direction control and also in some tricks. Many beginners ignore it most of the time, that's why they often bonk on walls. Just hold R2 or L2. You control everything with the camera, so if you need to turn ratchet, turn the camera. When you set a nice and precise angle, release the strafe and go for a charge for example. The neutral. This allows you to turn your charge into many different neutral jumps while saving the speed is the essential of the essentiality. This one works only at the end of the charge. All you have to do is to double tap R1 for the charge while holding your stick forward, then wait a little bit and start holding L1, and finally release everything as soon as the charge stops. At this moment, your analog stick must be neutral. Ratchet will slide on the ground. 
When I say your stick is neutral, that means don't hold it, don't touch, at all. This is very important for the next tricks. I think I will use the word neutral at least 50 times in this video, so be ready. The neutral cancel. This movement is the base of the base, you see it everywhere. It's exactly the same as the neutral, but this time you can do it whenever you want while charging, not only at the end. When you charge, just press L1, shoot with circle, the shock cannon is the most used, and stop holding your stick so it's neutral. All these at the same time. Ratchet should slide on the ground like before. Some weapons require the shooting mode like the sock cannon or the spitting hydra, and for some, the neutral cancel doesn't work at all. Yes, they stop the charge, but you don't slide. So there is no neutral and you can't do anything afterwards. For some surfaces you need to hold your stick forward to make the slide happen. Usually it can be in Phoenix under the ranger ship or when you charge up to a steep terrain like in the path of death of Florana. Also it helps you to bypass some obstacles like the cactus on Veldin. Furthermore you can ledge grab from the charge in the air so you don't bonk. Actually the neutral cancel prevents you from all the bonks on the walls. Just shoot before you bonk. Very easy and very useful. The neutral slide. You can slide even after the walk, but of course you need the neutral momentum. Just do the neutral cancel holding forward and immediately walk in any direction for less than a second. It means that you still don't release the stick. Finally, you press L1 and then release the stick almost at the same time. You should neutral slide in the same direction as your neutral cancel. If you have no speed, it means that you release the stick earlier than the L1 input, it must be the opposite. This movement is not really used, but it could be useful in some tricks. The neutral timing. Not a movement, but it's very important if you wanna do the next tricks consistently. The timing duration is around 0.5-0.7 seconds, a little bit more than half a second. I verified that by myself. You must master it perfectly, so I want you to take your phone or something that can measure the time. Try to stop the watch precisely in this timing window, while looking somewhere else. It should help you for the next jumps. The neutral jumps. There we go, probably the most important movements for beginners. You can store your momentum in the neutral cancel and do a jump with an increased speed. You have different jumps, but they all work with the same principle. First, do the neutral cancel. So here your stick must be neutral, don't hold it. Wait for the neutral timing, about 0507 seconds. And finally do the jump you want with your stick still being neutral. You can do a neutral single jump with X, a neutral double jump with XX, a neutral long jump with XR1. Be careful, X and then R1 almost at the same time. I couldn't do this jump at all when I just started. I always did it conversely, R1 and then X. I didn't understand why I always did the high jump instead. It was just stupid. You can even see the difference with the basic long jump. With R1X, it's much shorter, whereas with XR1, your jump is longer. If you single jump instead, your XR1 input is too early. Make sure that you know the neutral timing well. And of course, it works only with the helipack. For the neutral lag jumps, they are side flips. Press XR1 and push your stick to a side at the same time. And same thing for this one, press X a little bit earlier than R1. You can chain as many lag jumps as you want. All these jumps don't work if you get too close to an edge of a platform, so do the cancel earlier. You can even turn a neutral lag jump into a neutral long jump. After the first one, when Ratchet touches the ground, do the long jump and this time while holding your stick forward. Very important. This is a little bit harder since the timing window between these two jumps is small, only 2 frames. But you can still make this trick consistent if you get used to it. And of course you can turn the neutral lag jump into a neutral single jump or double jump in the same way. The falling neutral jumps. You can directly chain neutral jumps after a fall and they have more speed. Do the neutral cancel in the air, so your stick is neutral. 
when you get on the ground, wait half of a second and do the jump you want with your stick still being neutral. You can do the same jumps. Single jump, double jump, long jump with XR1 or the lag jumps. But we call them mega flips because they get very low and you go fast. It's exactly the same inputs as for the neutral lag jumps. You're not really obliged to fall. You can cancel between two platforms like on Florana. And same rule, don't be too close to the edge. If you wanna master all these falling neutral jumps, Tyrannosis is the best planet for practice. The ledge neutral jumps. They are also possible after ledge grabs. Do a neutral cancel in the air or a neutral long jump so you can grab the ledge. Then press X to get up. And finally, just before Ratchet touches the ground, do the jump you want. For the single jump, double jump and long jump, you need to hold your stick forward. Whereas for the lag jumps, they are mega flips too, your stick can be neutral and you just move it quickly to the side with the same inputs as for the neutral lag jumps. If you have no speed, you probably press the buttons too late. The timing window to hit all these jumps is very small, so take your time for practice. The directional changing neutral. This helps you to change Ratchet's direction crazy fast. Do the neutral cancel, but this time don't release L1. Keep your camera in the first person mode. Then move it wherever you want and finally release L1 so you enter back in the third person mode. You should see Ratchet still sliding. Normally after this movement you do another charge again. The directional changing neutral jumps. As the name says itself, you can quickly change the direction of your jump. To do that, first do the directional changing neutral of course, so Ratchet slides. Then you have many possible neutral jumps. Single jump, double jump, long jump or lag jumps. Make sure that you jump in the third person mode and that your stick is neutral. It can also be done after the neutral cancel in the air like a falling neutral jump. The strafe directional changing neutral lag jump. All jumps are affected by the strafe mode apart from the long jump. For example, if you turn the camera, side flip and hold strafe, Ratchet will change his direction in the air. You can do exactly the same for the neutral lag jumps. Just do the first one. Immediately hold strafe and turn the camera a little bit. Before Ratchet touches the ground, you must release the strafe. And then you can jump again. Sometimes you will accidentally backflip. This is because you don't hold strafe enough, so Ratchet doesn't turn completely. This movement is not really used, so don't care about it if you're a beginner, but it's fun to do. The double long jump. Remember I said that most of the jumps don't work on a Bunny Gemini? This movement does. We use this not after the neutral cancel, but after the normal long jump. Start your first long jump with the thruster pack. While being in the air, go to the gadgets menu to equip the helipack. As soon as Ratchet touches the ground, do another long jump holding forward. You should go way further. The only difficulty of this trick is the two frames timing. I try to look at Ratchet's feet. Practice is the only solution to feel this timing. The whip jump. This one was one of my favorite movements when I began because it allows you to reach an incredible distance. It just breaks the game. You can skip a lot of levels with this. Select the whip, charge in the air and hold L1. Then mash circle. Ratchet will do a whip swing in the air as if he stayed on a solid surface. This happens because you are still holding L1 and the game thinks that you are on the ground. This allows you to do a single jump, double jump, long jump with XR1 or side flip. And of course you can chain other jumps on the ground after the whip jump. For the whip double jump you need to go back to the neutral stick after the swing. It will give you extra speed. For the side flip when the whip swings you must directly push the stick from forward to the side and jump with R1 X. Very important. R1 and then X almost at the same time. Otherwise you risk too long jump. You can even curve your whip jumps. 
It's exactly the same, but the only thing that changed is this. Just before the whip swing, choose a direction with your analog stick. Then, you can jump while still holding in this direction. Sometimes you can have this weird camera shake with losing height. That means your circle input is too late. To prevent that, either you should spam circle more, or like I do, press it quickly only twice at the very end of the charge. This is when the swing happens. If you know this timing really well, you can be 100% consistent at that. It's especially important on Metropolis or Crash Side Backtrack, where your whip jump must be almost perfect to have enough height. For some reason, you can't do swings in the air on Veldin if you have no ground underneath, so it doesn't work. Crash Side is the best planet for practice. It's very near to the ship and you can try it on the way back. I practiced here a lot when I was a beginner. The Insta Whip. It's another variation of the whip jump. It helps you to reach a smaller distance in places where you don't have much space for your neutral long jump because of the charge. First, set up your weapon sequence. You must select any weapon that has ammo and that supports the neutral. Remember the picture I showed you before? That's what I mean. The turrets are the most used. The next weapon in the sequence must be the whip, so that if you press triangle only once, you have it in your hand. Charge in the air and hold L1, as you did it for the normal whip jump. Now it's gonna be different. Press triangle circle at the same time, I do it with the thumb. Here your weapon should change to the whip. And then quickly circle again. Ratchet will do the whip swing in the air. After that, it's exactly the same as the normal whip jump. Just do the jump you want. Of course you can curve the insta whip too. Just hold the stick in a direction and then press your inputs for the swing. If you have the weird camera shake again, you press the second circle too late. Try to press the inputs faster. I recommend pressing these buttons hard, so you make sure that you don't miss anything. And it doesn't work on Virgin for the same reason. The Insta Strike. This enables you to cross a small distance with a Hyper Strike. Prepare the same weapon setup as for the Insta Whip. Charge in the air. For this trick, you wanna always hold your stick forward. Press triangle circle at the same time. It's like the insta whip, but easier, without the second circle input. If you can't reach a platform, you probably press the buttons too early. Wait a little bit when you charge, and then insta strike. The neutral hyper strike. As you've already seen this many times, you can gain just a little bit of the distance at the very end of a neutral jump or a neutral cancel in the air. Choose a direction with the stick and press square. Very easy, but essential. You can't reach many spots without this. It also can be used on a vertical magnetic wall like in the command center after the neutral long jump. That's still not all you can do. Also the momentum is conserved after the hyper strike. That means more neutral jumps are possible after that. The stick must be neutral. And again, this movement doesn't work on Veldin if you have no ground underneath. The Hyper Swing Hover. This one is a little bit tricky. I remember it's in random when I just started, but it's fun and easy when you get used to it. It allows you to skip the right side of Dax on the way to the ship fight. Of course you need the Hyper Shot. Just double tap R1 for the charge in the air, obviously you hold forward. When Ratchet falls with the momentum, never touch the stick again until the end. Keep it neutral. This is very important, otherwise you lose all your speed. Use your Hyper Shot so you swing up. At this moment, only the circle button is used. When you get to the highest point, release it and immediately start to hover with X. You should fly with an incredible speed. And be careful! The more you change Ratchet's direction while flying, the more you will lose the speed. So I recommend you to use the right and left buttons on the D-pad with very small taps. The other option is not to wait for the fall. You use the hyper shot sooner and always hold forward until you reach the top. After that the stick is neutral. Also a double hyper swing hover is possible. Do the first one and your stick is neutral until the very end. When hovering at full speed, use your hyper shot but this time earlier, so you get a wider swing and therefore more speed. After that it's the same, you reach the highest point and then hover again as you did for the first one. To summarize the most important, when you fall and use the hyper shot, never hold the analog stick anymore. Then you just alternate X and circle. 
you should never hold them at the same time. And finally, use your D-pad with very small taps to control the flying direction. The Hyper Swing Neutral Hover. This one works only with the swings that push you up. First, swing up holding your stick forward. Release the Hyper Shot and then the stick almost at the same time. You do it even before reaching the highest point. Wait half a second in the air and start to hover with the stick still being neutral. You should have a lot of speed. And same thing like before, the more you move your stick while hovering, the more you lose the speed. So again, use your D-pad or your stick with small taps. If you hover too slow, it means that you swing up way too high. Of course you can chain this with a neutral jump after you fall while still not holding the stick. And it's possible to turn ratchet after releasing the hyper shot, so you change the direction of your neutral hover. The hyper swing neutral jumps. You can also do neutral jumps after the hyper shot. When you swing up, hold your stick forward. After releasing your hyper shot, keep holding forward just a little bit, then release it immediately. Wait very shortly when you land on the ground, and do any neutral jump you know. You should still not hold your stick forward, it's important. If you don't have much speed, either you wait too long before the jump or you swing too high. And same thing, you can turn ratchet after releasing the hyper shot, so you change the direction of your neutral jump. The ledge neutral hover. You can also do a neutral hover after the ledge grab. Do a neutral cancel in the air or a neutral long jump for the ledge grab. Keep your stick neutral. Then press R1 so you unhook the ledge. Immediately after that, start hovering with X with your stick still being neutral. And same rule like for the previous moments, you lose speed when turning ratchet. The wrench SI. As the name says itself, you can intercept slopes. It means to climb on steep surfaces by stopping the slide with your wrench. Jump on a slope, a mountain for example. You must always hold your stick forward. Just before you fall, do the wrench swing with square. And finally do the jump you want from the wrench swing. The fastest way is to double jump. If you hyper strike instead, you press square way too early. You should do it just before you fall. The high jump SI. It allows you to climb a slope with the high jumps if it's too steep for the wrench SI. When you high jump on a very precise spot, you can get the crouching animation and then high jump again. On Koros, you can beat the planet with this. Start with the high jump and turn Ratchet around himself. Also, you wanna hold R1 during all the movement. Then spam X so you hover down. When you land on a specific spot, Ratchet will automatically do the high jump since you're still mashing X and holding R1. After that, it's the same thing. The trick is impossible with the thruster pack, of course, because your movements are limited since it's too hard to control the jumps. The next four are the different swings. The neutral range swing. This one is used to change your direction really quickly or to cut angles. First, do the neutral cancel. Then you just press L1 square and move the stick at the same time. Ratchet will do the swing. The other possibility is to spam square without holding L1, but I prefer the first option since it feels more consistent for me. It's possible not only after the neutral cancel, all you need is the neutral momentum like after the folding neutral, the ledge neutral or all the neutral jumps. It's the same thing for every movement. Just when Ratchet touches the ground, press the inputs. The trick conserves the momentum so many jumps are possible after that. The neutral whip swing. It's the same as the neutral range swing, but you can do it only at the end of the charge. Just choose the direction and spam circle for the whip. It looks exactly like the whip jump, but on the ground. That's why you don't need to hold L1. If you do it after the ledge neutral or the falling neutral, do exactly the same as the neutral range swing, but with circle. You have the momentum, so you can chain many neutral jumps. And voila! Easy! The insta swing. 
This is like the previous one, but it can be done whenever you want, not only at the end of the charge. It works like the insta whip, so you just do the exact same inputs, but without holding L1 because you are on the ground. And it has momentum at the end too. The falling range swing. It can be used as a nice backup on chorus if you fail your last whip jump. You can flip the wall under the platform with a falling range swing. Walk to an edge and just when you are going to fall, press L1 square at the same time. Sometimes you can't fall off the edge because your inputs are too early. If you hyper strike, you press it too late. And again, it doesn't work on Veldin because you can't do swings in the air if there is no ground underneath. Now let's see some death abuses that help to respawn on the checkpoint if you are too far from it. The falling death abuse. This is the simplest death abuse because all you need is to get stuck in the air and not to move. This happens because the game thinks that you are soft locked so it kills you and you respawn directly on the checkpoint. The easiest way to do it is to throw two turrets to a wall next to each other and just jump between them. If you stay like this for 5 seconds long, you respawn. The hovering death abuse. Yes, you can die while hovering in the air. Just jump on something on which you can hover infinitely in the same spot. Also hold the stick. You must hover at least 5 seconds. So count it in your head and then release everything at the same time. The game will kill you for the same reason. The charging death abuse. This death abuse is the fastest one. Obviously you need the charge boots. It's possible to do it on the lava like in the Annihilation Nation arena or on any surface that makes you jump with damage like in VR arena. Normally it makes you jump 3 times before you die, but with this trick you can die instantly. All you have to do is to spam R1 for the charge when you jump on this surface. This happens because you reset all these 3 jumps by charging so it directly kills you. If you can't die from the first jump, you don't spam the charge fast enough. These next movements will allow you to clip walls. The turret clip. One of the most powerful and easiest tricks. Your turrets must be at least V5 because its hitbox is bigger. You need two turrets to clip a wall and only one for a corner. It's also possible with the mini turrets but it's much harder and you need three for a wall with a particular setup. Turret clips are easier on PS2 where you can even clip a wall with one turret. The setup I will show you works for any thin wall apart from VR skip where it's a little bit different, but it still works for the shiny walls. If you learn it, you will be able to clip through almost everything. Go to a wall, hold L1 for the first person mode and look down. You wanna put the first turret perpendicularly to the wall, so at 90 degrees. Do a small tap up with your stick or two smaller taps, it's up to you, and put the first turret. The second one should be around 5 degrees to the wall almost parallel. To do it, move the camera only to the left and put the turret. I say only to the left, so you save the small tap you did. Don't reset it by moving the camera down. That's exactly how I clipped walls when I was a beginner. Plus it was with 3 turrets, not 2. And I couldn't even clip most of the time. It was stupid. But if you do alright, normally you should be able to walk into the wall without any difficulty. For the corner it's a lot easier, you just do a small tap up with your camera perpendicularly to the wall and then put the turret. It works only if the walls are on the left of you. If you can't clip, your turret clip is not precise enough. In this case, do several range swings to the wall. And if you still can't clip it, turn ratchet to the opposite side of the wall and do many charges in different directions so it bursts you in. And if it still doesn't do anything, stop it and just try it again. The Insta Clip It's a very fast turret clip that you can do after a jump without going in the first person mode. It's possible with only one turret. It looks very cool but needs practice. 
Start with the charge and do the neutral cancel with the turret, so you throw it. It should land next to the wall. Do the neutral single jump, don't hold the stick. You should clip it. It's hard to time the turret throw well, so I don't recommend it for beginners. The camera clip. This trick was recently discovered and I'm so shocked by how it completely breaks the game, because now we can clip walls without turrets, and it's very easy. Normally it works for any thin wall, like it was for the turret clip. To do this, we will use the particular property of the camera in this game. It's a solid object that has collision with walls or enemies for example. It's made to avoid that the camera goes through textures. Actually, we have known for a long time that the camera can make you clip a wall, but we thought it was possible only with the neutral slide and only for some special walls. Now it works almost everywhere. The easiest way is to start either with the neutral long jump or the neutral lag jump. When you're close to the wall, hyper strike to the opposite side. From here, start holding L1. Finally, when you land on the ground, wait just a little bit and do the range swing to the wall with the stick and square at the same time. The camera should zoom in because you're still holding L1. This makes you push into the wall. Of course, you need to make sure that there are no boxes near you or something that you can break. It perturbs your hyper strike. There is a small difference between these two jumps. The neutral lag jump doesn't make you bonk, so it's cool for a small distance. Whereas with the neutral long jump you risk to bonk, so you must hyper strike earlier. However, for some walls it's more consistent with this jump, maybe because it has more speed. Furthermore, this movement breaks the any percent categories, because not only it works without turrets, but also without charge boots. You just do the double long jump, which is normally used on Obani Gemini. This gives you an extra speed on the helipack long jump. If Ratchet just does a range swing but nothing happens, you probably do it too early. Wait a little bit when you are on the ground and then do the swing. The Barrier Clip. This one is used on Obani Gemini to skip the whole refractor puzzle. What is interesting is that you can clip by just jumping into it. You don't need anything. It's all about precision. You see the middle of these two panels? You should clip just a little bit on the left of it. Then you need to wait around 5 seconds until you clip. What is important here is that you should move Ratchet a little bit to the right and left, back and forth, holding strafe. The reason is that you can die, because as we saw in the Fallen Death Abuse, the game will think that you got stuck, so it will kill you. A faster clip is possible if you double jump mashing X on the left of the panel. It's more precise, but it saves time. The speed clip. You can speed clip some walls with this. All you need is the neutral momentum. For example, after the neutral cancel, a neutral jump, or the neutral hover. The enemy clip. The one at Tyranoid's jump to the back can make you clip a corner. This mob does that if he attacks you, so you need to dodge him and immediately go to the corner before he jumps. The hardest part of course is to move the Tyranoid precisely in a spot from where he jumps to the corner, not too far from the wall, not too near. It can save time in any percent categories, but the trick isn't worth it anymore because we have the camera clip. The Ghost Ratchet. You have probably already seen this trick in Rack 1. Actually, it's present in the whole Ratchet trilogy. It allows you to walk free through walls. You must die by jumping in the mud or in something where you can sink. It must be less than a second before something that can save you from death, like a cutscene, a hit from an enemy, or the hyper shot. With this, you trick the game and it thinks that you died. After that, you can do whatever you want for the next 3 minutes, then it disappears. It also goes away if you die or load another planet, so be careful with the walls, do not fall off accidentally with charges. Also, your charge boots are a little bit faster when you're a ghost. These tricks will launch you up very high, so you can skip a lot of things.
The turret bounce. It's an easy and powerful trick. All you need is to find a slope. Go in the first person mode either in the camera settings or with the quick select and take the mega turrets at least V5. Look down. The slope must be just on the left because your turret will be put on the right of you so you stay in between. You should be parallel to the slope. Now you can put the turret and it should launch you very high so you can skip everything. If you don't put the turret at 0 degrees, your jump will be lower. It must be parallel. The proxy. This is a very powerful movement. When you charge on a slope, cancel and throw a turret or agents, the throwing animation makes you launch up very high, so you can skip a lot of walls and obstacles. It doesn't work on straight vertical walls, it must be a slope or an irregular corner. This movement is not easy at all, so you need to practice it for a long time. First, before doing anything, you must set up the weapon sequence. The selected weapon has ammo and supports the neutral, the shock cannon for example. The next weapon in the sequence must be at least V5 mega turrets. It's possible with the mini turrets and agents too, but the timing is harder, especially with the agents. Charge, hold forward. Just before you touch the slope, press triangle circle at the same time, and the stick must be neutral after this first input, very important. Finally, quickly press circle again. As you see, the inputs are very similar to the instawip, the only difference is that the stick becomes neutral after the first inputs. You should press the buttons fast, so I recommend you to tap them hard to make sure that you don't miss any input. Some people say that you also need to press L1 with the first inputs, triangle circle, at the same time, but forget this. Apart from the chorus proxy where you actually need L1 because you do it in the air. In some places, you will not have enough distance for the charge. This is the case for Holostar Studios where the proxy is a little bit different. For this one, you must separate the first triangle circle inputs. So charge, hold forward, do the cancel just before you bonk with circle, release the stick, it will push ratchet up a little bit. Then change the weapon to the turrets with triangle. And finally circle again to throw the turret. At the end of the proxy you can jump to get more height, like in the common center. By the way, be careful with this one. Every time you launch the game and go there for the first time, you will have an input lag after you press the button on the floor. The first triangle input will not work. This is due to the help desk window. So when you are there, you just need to press triangle and then you can start the runs. Also, the proxy conserves the neutral momentum so you can neutral hover with the neutral stick or neutral range swing with L1 and jump like on Metropolis. If you do the proxy with the mini turrets, press the inputs a little bit slower, otherwise you risk not throwing them at all. With agents, I don't even know how it works. For me, it just seems random. Most of the time you can't even throw them. You see that there are many things to think about, so don't try to do it all at once. Practice this movement part by part and you will get it. Or you can do all these inputs slowly and then increase the speed until it becomes normal. You will probably not get enough height at the beginning, so all you need to do is to practice and practice. Normally if you do exactly all I said, you should get it. Veldin is the best planet for practice because you respawn right in the place for the proxy. The neutral proxy jumps. As you've already seen for the command center, you double jump out of the proxy. But that's not all. As I said just before, the proxy conserves the neutral momentum, so you can also neutral long jump or side flip. It's a mix of the proxy and the neutral jump. And same thing, you should better have at least V5 mega turrets. First, of course, you do the same inputs as for the normal proxy with triangle circle at the same time and quickly circle again. Then immediately hold forward and do either a long jump with XR1 or a side flip with R1X, pushing your stick from forward to the side. Of course you can change the direction of the jump by simply holding the stick wherever you want after the inputs. It's harder than the basic proxy so you need more practice, but at least it looks swag. Especially the cactus proxy on Veldin. The magnetic proxy. You need of course a magnetic wall, the magnetic boots and boxes on top of the wall. I am talking especially about Metropolis backtrack. Charge to the wall, 
do a neutral side flip on the side of the boxers, it's important. And hyper strike while always holding the stick forward, you should fly very high. The reason why it happens is because when you hyper strike, ratchet goes automatically to these boxes. Therefore, be careful not to break them, otherwise the trick will not work. The elevator proxy. Ratchet's movements become very weird when he gets on a vertical elevator. For example, when you double jump on it while moving up, it's as if you stayed in the same spot. And for some reason you can proxy, although there is no slope. It's exactly the same inputs. What's very difficult here is that you must press them as early as possible when you start the charge, because it stops you if you get too close to the edge, like it was for the neutral jumps. The box heat? This is one of the newest tricks we discovered, so we don't know much, but it's really fun and easy to do. You need an empty sock cannon and a box in front of you. Aspirate a box holding circle and as soon as you see that it flies to you, do the range swing with square. You can also change the weapon with triangle. The crate should be stuck in the air and it also should look a little bit smaller. Now you can make it even smaller but don't take the sock cannon again because the box will just disappear. Move a little bit away from it. Press circle and then square almost at the same time. So you equip and unequip the sock cannon immediately. The crate will approach in your direction. The more you hold the sock cannon, the more the box will come to you. When it's very small, go stand on it. Try to be on the edge of the crate, not in the center. Finally, take the sock cannon in your hand. It should launch you incredibly fast. Now you can hover to maintain that huge speed. For some consistent setups, you need to do a death abuse, but before that, you must make the crate stuck in the air. When you respawn, the glitch will be already activated. All you have to do is to double jump off the box and change the weapons very quickly, so you equip the sock cannon just for a short time. With some setups, you can achieve crazy heights. Easy movement, but the only problem is to find these consistent setups for each planet. We have a lot of new skips to discover with this glitch. These are some tricks with weapons to do more damage. The Shock Cannon Weaving Although the Shock Cannon is the first and the only free weapon in the game, it's one of the most useful and powerful, at least V5 of course, is the level from which it can do weaves. The weave appears for less than a second, it's long enough to hit a boss up to 3 times, and you also one-shot all the enemies, so you can simply do a 360 no-scope and kill everything around you. It wastes 10 ammo per weave, but it's worth it. Just charge your shock cannon with holding circle, jump to the side, shoot with releasing circle and immediately turn ratchet from the left to the right, back and forth. If you can't hit the boss 3 times, you probably turn ratchet with a too wide or too narrow angle. Remember, your shock cannon weave should go through the whole boss hitbox on every hit. The Rhino Bombing the Rhino is the most expensive weapon in the game and for some reason it does almost nothing against the bosses. However, with this trick, all the bosses in this game will become weak as F. They can't do anything to you anymore. Nefarius is dead after less than 5 shots, so it's very powerful. All you need is a Rhino from V2 to V4 and a Nitro Eruptor preferably on V8 for the maximum damage. Set your weapon sequence with the Nitro Eruptor as the first weapon and the Rhino as the second one. Shoot with the Nitro Eruptor. When the bomb touches the boss, use the Rhino. You should do a ton of damage. This happens because you hit the boss on every frame. Then you select the Nitro Eruptor with double triangle and you do the same thing again. It's all about the timing, so if you do a small damage, you shoot with the Rhino not on time. Try different timings. The Rapid Fire Some weapons like the Flux Rifle, Nitro Launcher, Infector, Rhino or the Bouncer fire very slowly. However, you can still break the system and shoot fast. You have three ways to do it. Take one of these weapons. Every time you shoot, just change the weapon with triangle so you can shoot earlier and repeat it again and again. 
If you want to use the same weapon, press triangle three times quickly, so you do one lap of the weapon sequence. You can do it even faster, if one weapon has no ammo or if you have only two weapons. This way, you skip the third slot, so you will need to press triangle only twice instead of three times. The second way is to alternate circle and square, so after you shoot, the range swing resets the fire. And the other possibility is to press circle square circle very quickly, or I should say, as quickly as possible. It's the fastest method that breaks the game. The trick is very useful when you are at the beginning of an any percent category where you don't have your V5 shock cannon for the weaving yet. The Snip Scope In NG+, the Flux Rifle is the weapon that does everything in missions. It one-shots any ship and you kill the Bioblitterator in 16 shots only. What happens is that the damage is multiplied when you shoot far. Of course, it's better with the sniper at the max level. It also saves the any percent categories because you don't need to grind bolts for strong weapons to beat Nefarious. You just level up the Flux Rifle to V5 and that's it. Nefarious is not a problem anymore. What is even sicker than that, you can shoot faster with it. The trick comes from the rapid fire, third option with pressing circle square circle very fast. All that changes is that you always hold L1 for the scope. That's it. Sometimes you will accidentally throw the wrench because the inputs are not precise enough. Try to experiment with different input speeds. It makes you save shit a lot of time, like in NG Plus Biobliterator or any percent nefarious, which can be even done in one cycle. Very sick trick. There are some other tricks. The swimming glitch. This trick is very strange, because you can swim in the air as if you were in the water. For some reason it can be done on Veldin, although there is no water. Just clip into the swimming pool so you can walk and charge on the bottom. Then crouch and wait for the cycle. Each cycle is around 15 seconds long. When Ratchet starts to swim, immediately go down with square. You should be able to clip the floor. Now you can swim in the air. But be careful, if you go too high, the swimming glitch disappears. The mission turret skip. That's a hard one. Even a normal casual player knows that you can't control Ratchet when he walks into the ranger turret. However, there is a way to skip it, so then you just quickly destroy all the ships with the Flux Rifle. Actually, there are two methods to do it. The easiest one is to simply spam circle with the agents that can throw you high enough to skip the turret. Of course, the agents should be not more than V3, because from V4, they fly. Then you just hope for the best, because this shit is random no matter how you spam it. You never know if it will work on the first try. It seems to depend on the ship cycles or any shit of it. Also, on some files it's more consistent than on the other ones. Don't spam immediately after entering the mission, because Ratchet will throw too early and the agents will perturb your movement. Always wait half a second when the Ranger ship door is opening and then mash circle. And of course, if there is a second method, it's because there is a way to make this consistent, but it's much harder. You need to equip the turrets and go in the first person mode at the end of the previous mission. The fastest way is with the quick select. Now you are ready. When the door is opening, move the camera down using the right stick and start mashing circle for the whole trick. When the first turret is thrown, this time move the camera just a little bit to the right. You should throw the second turret because you are still spamming circle. If you do all it correctly, Ratchet should simply bypass the Ranger turret on the right side. Finally, you go back in the third person mode so you can use the Flux Rifle again. It's very difficult because you must be precise with the throws, so I recommend you to reduce the camera sensitivity a little bit. Also make sure that the camera movements are set to normal. Sometimes you're stuck by these two turrets because they are too far from each other. Sometimes, on the contrary, they are too near to each other, so Ratchet doesn't go enough to the right. Sometimes you throw them too far from the Ranger turret. You see that there are a lot of possibilities to fail this, that's why it's hard. The only solution is to practice. 
The mission completed skip. Every time you finish a mission, you need to wait about 3 seconds to be able to go to the next one, but you can trick this. On PS2, you can just quit the mission from the menu just when the mission completed message pops up. On PS3, you must death abuse in the water or in the mud, for example. I thought it was for fun to suicide like this when I watched Runners for the first time, but no, there is a real reason. If you have a surface that makes you jump with damage like the lava, you can use the charging death abuse so you die faster. Be careful not to die too early before the mission completed message, because the game will count it as a failed mission and you will need to restart. The Vidcomic Escape, the easiest frame perfect trick and the only one on which you can be consistent. In NG+, you can skip them by just double tapping X, but if you miss some in between, you can't do that. However, you can still trick the game. First, select the Vidcomic one, then press X square exactly at the same time, or I should rather say, at the same frame. You can do it with the thumb or with two fingers. A password window should pop up. Press triangle. If you did everything correctly, it will ask you if you want to skip the vid comic. Press X. Finally, you just skip all the other vid comics normally. Voila! The upgrade animation cancel. I hate when I get the upgrade animation on a run, because you can skip it. If the next enemy will make your weapon upgrade, you must be prepared. Just kill the enemy and immediately unequip the weapon either by doing a range swing or by changing the weapon with triangle. You should see an upgrade message. If you use a weapon that touches the enemy instantly like the shock cannon or the flux rifle, the trick is more difficult for some enemies like the saucers or the robots on Markedia because they explode the moment you shoot. In this case you must unequip the weapon earlier, basically you press the buttons almost at the same time. The Clunk Tuning In NG+, you can kill the gigantic clunk in only 2 shots instead of 3. Before you start a run, you just need to die in this fight at least 6 times. This happens because the game sees that you have trouble with this boss, so it reduces his health. You can actually do the same for all the other bosses, but the only problem is that for some reason it doesn't carry over the files. Only Clunk does. The menu storage. When you leave the cursor in the menu, its position is saved even if you load the file. It means you can set this up before the run. For example, in any percent categories, you select the thruster pack from the very beginning. The fastest way is to put the cursor on this gadget before the run, and then you navigate the menu with R2 or L2 to load the file. The same works for Quarks with comics. If you are an NG+, select the leave button. The next time you enter the vidcomic in your run, you can just mash start and X buttons, so you leave it instantly. This mini trick is almost nothing, but it still saves you some seconds. Only one movement will make you move faster in clunk sections. The punch jump, the most basic clunks trick. While walking, press square and then X almost at the same time. I do it with the thumb. Clank will punch and jump immediately. Every punch gives you a boost, so you can still save some seconds. These movements will make you faster in the vid comics. The punch jump. The most basic quarks movement. It's exactly the same as the clank's punch jump. Walk in one direction, press square and then X almost at the same time. Again, you can do it with the thump. Quark will punch and jump immediately. And same rule as for the neutral jumps, it stops you if you are too close to an edge. It gives you a good boost, but we still have faster movements to learn. The double punch jump. It's the most used Quark's movement and the fastest one. It allows you to skip some parts like the elevator in the vidcomic one. Only with this you can already be fast in all the vidcomics. Walk, press fast, square x square, Quark will jump higher and further. 
Same rule, don't be too close to the edge or it stops you. The high jump. You can jump a little bit higher, but enough to reach a platform above or sometimes to avoid the ledge grab. Just press X and then square almost at the same time. It's the reverse of the punch jump. The ladder jump. Quark climbs on the ladder very, very slowly. Obviously we must fix this. Just jump and hold up the stick, so you immediately grip and you can jump again. The wall punch. This one is tricky because of the small timing window, but it looks swag. It helps you to reach a height faster or even skip some platforms. Do a normal wall jump. In around 0.25 seconds, press square for the punch. You need to practice this a lot to get used to this short timing. The spamming punch. It's hard to believe, but it's actually faster to kill a boss by spamming the punch. For example, the snake is done in one cycle. This is crazy. Just go next to a boss and mash square. That's it. The only thing you need to care about is your health, since you can die instead. The damage invincibility. Every time you get hit, you are invincible for a little more than a second. This is enough to skip some things. For example, in the vidcomic one, you don't need to wait for the platform. You can just go and use the double punch jump to reach the next platform. Or in the vidcomic 2, where instead of the ledge grab, it's faster to just go down. But of course you need more than one health, otherwise you die. The next 6 movements are one of the hardest in the game. You need the Tiro guys. Most of them are impossible on Veldin if you have no ground underneath and on planets like Koros or Dax if you are above the water. On Veldin you can't do the range swing and on the other planets you just can't equip the Tiro guys. The Tiro cancel. This trick enables you to move in moments when you can't do it, like during the bolt or trophy animation or when you start the phoenix elevator. You can save a little bit of time in ATB or in any percent VR skip. For the bolt or trophy animation, all you have to do is to equip the Tiro guys and just before you're gonna grab the bolt, press square. For some reason, the game allows you to move while the bolt is turning above you. For the Phoenix Elevator, you need to stay with the Tiro guys on the edge of the area in which you can activate the elevator. When you go out, press square triangle or square triangle square quickly. The second option makes your Tiro guys unequipped at the end. You must input as late as possible so you have time to exit the elevator. The Tiro Jump this is the first step for the next movements that will make you skip an infinity of a distance. You can also use this like a triple jump to reach a high spot. First, make sure that the range is equipped. If you have a weapon out, the trick will not work. Select the Tiro guys. You can actually also equip the range just after that. Normally you should hear a range sound. I always do that, so I'm 100% sure that there is no weapon selected. Then, do the following inputs quickly, square x square, Ratchet should single jump with the wrench in the air. Now you can single jump again, or also double jump or high jump with R1x. Very useful, but the next movements are even more. The infinite jump. Here we are, one of the most difficult movements in Ratchet Ratchetria and probably one that breaks everything. Why you will ask? Because you can just jump infinitely in the air, but it will take you days and days and days and days of practice. For me it was around 2 weeks to do at least 15 jumps in the air. You should be ready to do minimum 20 without losing much height, because that's exactly what you need to do in any percent VR skip. And it's still not the hardest trick that I mentioned in this tutorial, there will be even more. Firstly, you must have the quick select pose or it will make the trick impossible. And secondly, put your Tiro guys in the first slot of the first ring because it's easier to select it when you go forward. Now we can begin. 
You can start this movement directly in the air, but first we will do the zero jump that you perfectly master now and which you are 100% consistent at. From here you can do either a double jump or a high jump. With the last one you have more time to react, so I recommend you to start with that. When you do your first jump in the air, equip the zero guys and always hold forward. Nothing complicated until there, right? Now listen carefully because the inputs and the timings are a complete disaster. Press fast, square, triangle, triangle, square, square. I repeat, square, double triangle, double square. If you do it perfectly, you should hear the wrench sound and see small sparks. Then ratchet becomes ratchet and does another wrench swing in the air. This is when you repeat your jump again. So do the next one and it's exactly the same, you equip the zero guys and blah 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 blah, square triangle triangle square square, you know. You can also try square triangle square instead, but you need to press it around twice slower. I still prefer the first option even though it's more input intensive, it seems more consistent for me. Let's see the common mistakes. The hyper strike after the quick select, there are two reasons. The first reason, you press your first square too early when being in the quick select. You need to wait a little bit after you equip the tier guys because the quick select doesn't close immediately after releasing triangle. The second reason, you move your stick too early when you try to select the tier guys. It doesn't choose anything at all, that's why you hyper strike. Yes, you can try it simply when staying on the ground. Select anything when you move your stick early after the triangle. It will not work. So when you open your quick select, wait just a little bit and then equip the tier guys. The hyper strike before the range swing. Your last square inputs are too late, so you must press the buttons faster. The quick select pops up accidentally. You probably hold triangle too long when you press the inputs. Try to tap the buttons with the faster fingers. You lose height. It's normal if you just start learning the trick, however you still need to know the reasons. You probably press the first square too late, so you should try it as early as possible, but not too early because as we saw before, you can hyper strike. Also, it can be because you press the buttons not fast enough or you select the tier guys too late after the jump. That's it for the common mistakes. Now I give you the last advice. The fastest way is to do delayed double jumps. That means you must wait a maximum of half a second between each jump. It's faster because you open the quick select less times and so you also lose less height. Normally you can't really go up with this movement, but on some slopes it's possible with the high jumps. All you have to do is exactly the same, but with holding your stick forward so you climb. I wish you good luck for this hard movement. Crash sight is the best plan for practice because you spawn very high above the sea. Remember that you should not only do the maximum jumps in the air, but also try not to lose height. It's important. The neutral tier jumps. Once you master the IJs, this movement is nothing. Charge in the air, just double tap R1 and hold forward. Ratchet will start to fall. Equip the tier guys and do the same inputs with square and triangle like for the IJs. Just after Ratchet does the wrench swing, do the neutral jump you want. For the neutral long jump, the stick must be neutral. For the neutral lag jump, you need to push the stick to the side. These both jumps can be done twice in a row, but when you do it for the second time, it has less speed. Then you can switch back to the IJs. Also, it's possible to curve these jumps if you hold the stick in a direction just before the range swing. The zero fall. This one is a lot easier. Charge in the air, fall. Your stick must be neutral until the end. Equip the zero guys. Do almost the same inputs, square, triangle, triangle. Obviously you can also press triangle only once. The only difference with the IJs is that we delete the last square inputs. Therefore Ratchet will just fall again without the range swing. So you can do the same thing many times. Your speed will reduce of course, but I think it's still faster than the neutral tier jumps. It can be also used to cancel a jump pad like in Obonijmenai. Just equip the tier guys in the air and press square triangle slowly, then wait a little bit and finish with the hyper strike.
the Tira flips. Impossible to do this trick without knowing the infinite jumps. Impossible. Even if you are perfect with your IJs, at the beginning you will still struggle a lot with the Tira flips. They are just insanely hard. You need probably a month of practice to get at least almost consistent. But it's crazy how this movement breaks the game. You can infinitely increase the height, the only limit is your consistency at this trick. If you learn it, you'll be like a god in this game, able to combine this with the IJs and go wherever you want. Make sure that you have no boxes near you, because it can disturb your tiro flips. You need to be in the air, so do the jump you want, the side flip for example. Select the tiro guys. After you quit the quick select, immediately press square triangle triangle fast. It's very similar to the tiro fall inputs. While Ratchet is unequipping the tiro guys, immediately hold L1. This is the moment for your next jump, right now, when Ratchet becomes Ratchet. You are still holding L1, don't forget. Now the hardest part. Press the side flip input with XR1, moving the stick to the side and releasing L1, all this at the same time. Personally, I prefer to use the D-pad instead of the stick. The trick is difficult especially because of this small timing window when you can hit the side flip. It must be exactly when Ratchet has just unequipped the Tiro guys. If you want, it's the moment when you can't see Ratchet anymore. Also, it's about the precision of releasing L1. It must be, again, I repeat, exactly at the same time as the side flip. You can even backflip! All that changes is that you move back the stick. For this one, it's better with the D-pad. The mistakes you can make are pretty much the same as the infinite jump, apart from one which was the hyper strike after the quick select, because you press the first square too early. Actually, for the tiro flips, you can press it as early as you want, so don't care about this. What you really need to care about is the timing of the side flip and releasing L1 with the side flip at the same time. If you don't time it well, you will glide instead. And be careful with this, because you can't equip the tiro guys anymore when you are hovering, so you will hyper strike. To avoid this, fall a little bit and then select the tiro guys. Don't press square triangle triangle too fast, because Ratchet will not unequip the tiro guys. You move faster horizontally if you hold strafe with R2 or L2. I didn't know that, so I was really impressed by how just holding strafe makes you move faster, but it's only horizontal and doesn't change anything for the height. So when my goal is to simply reach a height as fast as possible, I don't use strafe. But when I must go diagonally, then I use it. Sometimes it's better with the strafe, because your camera doesn't do weird moves. Well, I wish even more good luck for this insanely hard movement. It becomes easy with time and muscle memory. These last two movements are the different frame-perfect mid-air charges. The mid-air charge. In the whole game, it's used only once. Onobani Jueko in G Plus no QE, where you don't have your tiro guys to skip the planet. You activate Ghost Ratchet by getting hit by the robot, and then you just mash R1 the shit of it. It's the triple charge. It means you must hit R1 in the specific frame twice in a row to make two mid-air charges. It's just incredible if you do that on the first try in your PB pace run. You can never get 100% consistent at this frame perfect trick. If you want to, you should press R1 60 times per second, which is just impossible, unless you have a turbo controller of course. However, there is a method to make this trick more consistent. While spamming, hold L1 and release it on the frame where the charge ends. This will give you a second chance at hitting the input on the right frame. In this case, you will see the camera shake. This trick is essential only if you want to beat the world record because it saves about 15 seconds over the turret clip. So don't care about this if you are not a top runner. The range swing mid-air charge. You can also do a mid-air charge out of the range swing in the air, like the falling range swing or during infinite jumps. After the range swing, again, you just spam R1 and hope for the best. It's all about luck. What is cool is that you can chain it with the tiro falls or the tiro long jumps. That's it! I tried to cover the maximum of movements and tricks. 
You have the Discord server link of Ratchet & Clank speedruns in the description which is a server for every Ratchet game, so join, especially if you are a runner. We have a really active community that helps the beginners to start speedrunning. As I said, the game is very hard, so take your time, don't learn everything at once, start from the most basic, easy movements and tricks, and you'll get it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.